This video will cover how to construct the perpendicular bisector of a given line segment such as AB. In order to do this construction, we need to start by putting the center of our compass, this uh, big circular part, on point A. And now there's these little crosshairs, I'm not sure if you can see them in the video, that need to be lined up with point A. So where the crosshairs intersect each other, I want to line them up with point A. And in order to do this construction properly, I must align my radius so that it's greater than half of the segment AB. So you can see right now the radius hole here is not more than halfway of the given segment. So I'm going to slide it over and then tighten it up. I always shoot for around three quarters of the way of the given segment. Um, that way you ensure that you're more than halfway. The next step is to swing an arc above and below the line segment. So I need to swing way down and swing way up. Then I'm going to switch and put my center on B. I'm going to do the exact same thing, um, including keeping the same radius. If you were to change the radius, you would not get the perpendicular bisector. You would still get a perpendicular line, but it wouldn't bisect the segment, meaning it would not cut it in half. So it's important to keep the radius the same throughout the construction. So now you can see with these two arcs, I've created two intersection points, which I'll call C and D. You don't have to label them, but it's kind of nice too so that you can refer back to them throughout the construction. The next step is to actually create the bisector, which means that I just have to line my straight edge up with points C and D, and then create the line that goes through it. You want to cap it with arrows because it's a line that extends infinitely in both directions. So now with this construction, we can make two very important conclusions. The first one being that I know I have a midpoint. We'll call it M. The midpoint represents the point on which the segment itself is cut in half. So here I can make the conclusion that AM, segment AM, is congruent to segment BM. Because again, a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. The next conclusion that I can make is that I know line CD is perpendicular to segment AB. After all, this was the perpendicular bisector. So again, line CD is perpendicular to segment AB. I'm going to continue with the next construction that we have, which is considered a midpoint. The construction is actually identical to what we just did. So I'll just recap what we did. We started by putting our center on A. We swung our radius so that it's open to greater than half of the given segment. Again, I shoot for three quarters. Swing those arcs above and below. Switch. Swing above and below again. Construct that bisector, the perpendicular line. And then the only difference between the two constructions that we've done, the perpendicular bisector and the midpoint, is that in, if they ask you for a midpoint, you actually have to label the midpoint. I labeled it in the last one, but I didn't have to. So here I just have to call it out, I have to label it, and I typically label it M, M being midpoint. So again, the only difference is that here in this first construction, I did not have to label this point M, but here when they ask for the midpoint, I have to label it as M.